As my oldest daughter graduates high school on Mother's Day, I remember challenges and feel God's tug to share our story. When I was eight months pregnant, I had an urgency to pray for Kayla's hands. Brent and I prayed for her hands and protection for her life. We chose Psalm 51, 10 through 12 for her. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Kayla was an easygoing baby, so we loved taking her places, but periodically we would have unexplained fever. We were told that she most likely had a virus. I would continue to ask about it at appointments because it didn't seem right. Kayla had her first picture in the newspaper before age two, wearing her favorite dress at an Easter egg hunt. Shortly after, she stopped walking and had swelling in her legs. After x-rays and blood work, we were sent to a rheumatologist. He told us she had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis and needed an anti-inflammatory medication. She began feeling better and loved playing with her sister, Ashlyn. She was crazy about books and read by age three. She loved music and singing and was drawn to the piano. At age four, the rheumatologist told us Kayla was in remission. She seemed to be doing well and we found out we were pregnant with our son. An ultrasound revealed we would be fighting for Jason's life due to a diaphragmatic hernia. My water broke at 28 weeks, with doctors estimating a 5% survival rate. Ashlyn didn't understand, but Kayla struggled. We told her God could do anything, and Jason would either go home with us or with Jesus. Telling God we would serve Him no matter the outcome was so difficult, but we had to trust Him. God provided, keeping Jason in the womb 32 weeks and major surgery at three days old and four pounds. The surgeon was able to repair him other than being left with one lung. There was a bump where his other lung should be due to his spleen and intestines being in his chest at birth. We were thankful when we finally got to hold him and at seven weeks, we were able to go home. We were told to keep Jay away from people all winter and Kayla was reading at a third grade level, so kindergarten didn't seem right. Brent and I decided homeschooling made sense. That was our first year at First Baptist. On December 5th, Kayla wagged home her Sparks book, having memorized the Salvation Scriptures, wanting to pray to ask Jesus in her heart. She began piano lessons shortly after. We continued to pray against germs, and in January I took Jason for his checkup. When I was shown his x-ray, I was amazed. He had two fully developed lungs. God had been faithful. In third grade, Kayla won the Reading Rainbow Writers Contest for Oklahoma, which Ashlyn would win three years later. We continued homeschool with Kayla eager to go to the piano each morning. Sixth grade at public school went well the first few weeks and Kayla enjoyed the trumpet, but she began telling us her knee hurt and there was swelling. The rheumatologist she had seen had multiple lawsuits, so we were referred to the head of pediatric rheumatology at OU Children's. The doctor said he hadn't seen JRA that advanced in years. Kayla's knee had begun crippling. She had inflammation in multiple joints and would need to go on methotrexate, which is used in higher doses for chemo. When he looked at her hands, he thought the flexibility she had was impossible with so much inflammation. He believed playing the piano had saved her fingers. God then reminded me of our prayer for her. We started methotrexate on Fridays, so Kayla would have weekends to recover. She was down and frustrated with difficulty focusing and wanted to know why God wasn't healing her. Kids would ask why she spaced out or about her knee because she frequently wore band-aids. She told us she felt ugly and hated being different. That Christmas, we talked about porcelain dolls for the girls' gifts, and I looked online. Right away, I saw a doll named Kayla, made six years before my daughter was born. It looked very similar to her with a denim dress much like the one she had worn. I couldn't believe what I saw as God reminded me that there will be no more crying or pain in heaven. On the knee was a band-aid and on the cheek a tear. By spring, Kayla's spirits began to lift and she asked to try cheer. Her doctor said she could if she was able to tolerate it, but he didn't think she could tumble. At her next appointment, it was decided to inject methotrexate in her knee because it was locked. She left with pain and a limp, but insisted we get to school so she wouldn't miss cheer tryouts. We hurried back and she hobbled through making the squad. 
By the end of seventh grade, Kayla was able to do back handsprings and dance on point. She saw a Gabby Giffords interview and decided she wanted to be a music therapist to help others with disabilities or brain injuries. That knee continued to get injured and was every color. Sometimes when Kayla would worship, the pain would stop, but the rest of the time she remained strong. She hoped others would want to know God when they saw she was happy. Then sophomore year, she was in remission. She still tires some and joints are scarred, but she has done beyond what was expected. Kayla has had many music opportunities in church and at performances. She made all district and all state chorus and all district band with French horn. Miami Little Theater allowed Kayla to express herself with singing, acting, and dance. As Anna Maria, she was able to worship on stage. She was Dorothy with her dad as Scarecrow and our dog as Toto. On the Yellow Brick Road, we met a brave lion and prayed with his family as God took baby Emmy over the rainbow. And we pray for the Sandas as they deal with their daughter's crippling illness and all the rest of our MLT friends we love. The role of Cinderella was special. As Kayla sang in my own little corner, or impossible, she had lived it. And my being able to make the transformation dress for her was touching as so many people came to watch her represent beauty. Almost every time Kayla performs, I have people comment on her graceful hands. I have had others tell me when she touches them in prayer or kindness, they feel something special. I know it is because her hands were touched by God. And I wonder if it would be different if we hadn't prayed that day. Life is full of those moments some of which we miss. So I choose to share our story and hope to encourage others. It is our wish that all our friends be a part of God's family. Our lives are to be lived as an act of worship, scarred and flawed as we are, with answers we don't understand. Our struggles may be less than some and more than others, but we are grateful for what we have. We are looking forward to the day we will be over the rainbow, free from pain. Kayla, we are so proud of your strength, beauty, and heart. We cannot wait to see what God does with the rest of your life.